Good morning, everybody. Okay, so um, this video is going to I'm going to talk you through um, this question uh, that I've set to you for to submit by the 22nd of June. It's your essay number six. Um, no surprise. Um, I told you about this one before the half term break, so you've had. Um, certainly a couple of weeks to start thinking through what this question is about um, and when I originally told you about it I did say to you that I would um, record another video which is what I'm doing here today um, in which I'll just give you a, a steer um, to make sure that you don't fall into any pitfalls because um, I've set this question to students in previous years and um, just from experience, some students have misinterpreted the question and they've gone off in the wrong wrong direction right from the beginning. So I think it's uh, the reason I want to record this video, I am recording this video for you, is just to um, give you that, uh, that, that that initial steer. Anyway, you've got um, just, under th just under three weeks now to sort of work on this particular question. So as with all essay questions, um, you know, the, ab absolutely... Um, what you mustn't do is leave it to the last minute and suddenly sit down and do it a day or two days before the deadline. It's simply that doesn't work. OK, so what you should be doing with A-level is thinking it through way in advance, uh, two or three weeks in advance, analysing the question, um, sketching out an initial plan, then spending some time doing some initial research, reading around um, and finally putting the final pieces together and then writing it um, just before the deadline. And the deadline is the 22nd of June there, essay number six. OK, so let's just go through this one. Now, remember um, that really important lesson that we did way back fairly early on in year, uh, in year 12. OK, the, 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 the lesson about question analysis. And remember, you separate question analysis out from planning. It's, they're different. Question analysis is what you do before you write the plan. Okay, now in the examination, the question analysis happens virtually instantly inside your head. Um, yeah, because by the time you sit the exam, you've got two years of experience behind you, and hopefully you can look at a question and immediately get some sort of handle of what it's about. But while you're working your way through the two years of the A-level A course, it's really important that when you before you start writing your plan, that you take the time to unpick what the question is about. Okay, and you remember when we did that, I told you to distinguish between the topic of the question and the proposition that sits behind the topic. Okay, so the topic is what is the question about? What's the constant that sits through the question that would appear in every single one of your paragraphs? Okay. Uh, whereas the proposition is the the issue that needs to be debated, that will be argued about. OK, so here you've got a quote. OK, uh, and as with all A-level questions or most A-level history questions, when they give you a quote, it's, it's saying to you, here is what a historian has said. Do you agree with it? OK, and by implication, it, it means that this is a, this is something that there's going to be debate about. Um, different historians will have different views and they will argue with each other over this. And what you've got to do in your essay is you've got to basically have that internal argument, almost as if there are two or three different historians writing inside your essay. You've got to be able to debate the different views of that essay. OK, um, so this one um, is actually from the second specimen paper. OK, so straight away, that's useful for you because you know that with the, with the specimen papers, um, if you go to the mark scheme, there will be indicative content at the back. OK, um, so that would certainly be worth you having a look at as part of your preparation. But remember, indicative content um, is it, 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 saying this is an indication of the type of material that the examiner will be looking for, but it is not the only all the material okay but certainly that's something for you to use okay so let's have a look at the question let's let's separate the topic from the proposition okay um so the to the topic what the question is about is the question is about hitler's leadership 
style okay so that is the topic okay and the proposition and i'll just change the color of my pen is a proposal that basically as a result of hitler's leadership style hitler did not dictate okay uh, so I'll just um, get a better pen there okay i'm using the wrong one okay there we are hitler did not dictate okay um or he was a dictator who did not dictate that's what you're being asked to debate okay so you've got your topic and you've got your proposition okay um underline the word consequence as part of that proposition as a consequence of hitler's leadership style um, he was a dictator who did not dictate and you've got to unpick that a little bit in your head and hopefully because you've studied the lessons and you've done the lessons you'll you get an, an immediate sense of what this is basically about and now in your head you should be thinking yes i get i kind of get this um what the question it reword the question in a sense what it's basically saying is is that because of hitler's style of leadership he was actually a weak dictator okay um he was a dictator who did not dictate he had the powers to be a dictator but he actually didn't really use those powers is what it's saying um so in effect he was a form of weak dictator okay so if that's me having immediately engaged with that, and hopefully you know because you, you've 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 sat these lessons and you've gone through all of these lessons and that will now relate to you it's about the weak dictator debate or alternatively okay the master of the third reich which is the opposite point of view okay um that he was a strong dictator okay so weak dictator versus strong dictator um is what the question is asking you to engage with and it's saying how far do you agree with that statement uh, notice as always that it is about germany 1933 to 1935 okay um so just be careful in your illustrative material when you sort of engage with this topic that you draw your your evidence from the years 1933 to 35 <clears throat> that you don't stray too far beyond that okay that's important otherwise um, it, um you'd be marked down for irrelevance okay i mean simply you wouldn't be awarded for the material you're putting in the answer okay let's move on okay so question here here is my suggested approach for question analysis which uses that sort of um wxyz approach to planning that i taught you earlier in the year okay and you can see there that i've broken it into an introduction and a conclusion as always okay i'm not going to talk you through those that's for you to, to work out how you, what you're going to say in those okay <clears throat> i don't want to kind of spoon feed you too much with this particular question um but as you can see <clears throat> Um, that should actually say five, shouldn't it? Um, there are five main building blocks. Okay, this is the way I would approach it. Okay, um, now that could but mean basically five paragraphs. Okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that. You may decide, oh, well, you know, one of those building blocks is so so much to talk about it. You might break it into two sub paragraphs okay that's that's for you to decide but as you can see broadly speaking the first two building blocks are about the topic you show knowledge of the topic which is hitler's leadership style and the the third fourth and fifth building blocks is where you consider the proposition that he was a weak dictator okay um so <clears throat> What would my building block blocks be? Okay, so building block one. Okay, seeing as the question is about Hitler's leadership style, start your essay off by 
write in a paragraph which show that you have a clear understanding of what leadership of what Hitler's leadership style was okay so that's where you you'd want to talk about you know, the fact that he um, initially because things did change over the three years uh, w was fairly conventional he ruled he, he met with his cabinet in Berlin but then he increasingly over the three years distanced himself based himself in Berchtesgaden in the Berghof in the Bavarian Alps um, unusual getting up late and not meeting with the civil servants and um, even his senior ministers wouldn't have access to him etc etc okay just hit that one straight away this is after all the topic of the question isn't it show the examiner you understand that Hitler's leadership style was unusual okay having done that okay because remember the topic is about um, Hitler's leadership OK, um, show knowledge about Hitler's theoretical power as a dictator, because written into that question is that underlying assumption. He was a dictator. OK, but you're being asked to debate. Did he use those powers or how effectively did he use those powers? But there is that assumption in the question there that he was a dictator. So show knowledge of that, OK, about the theoretical fact that he was a dictator. So what we mean by that is um, uh, that the, the legal revolution basically enormously strengthened his power to make decisions by himself. The Enabling Law, okay, the Enabling Act is obviously a key thing for you to talk about. What powers did the Enabling Act give to Hitler? The Reichstag Fire Decree, what powers did that give to Hitler? The fact that um, uh, government was centralised in Berlin, the, the powers of the federal states were removed. Um, so the law of the 30th of January 1934 effectively strengthened Hitler's power. Um, and of course, the... Knights of the Long Knives um, uh, removed the, the final obstacle to Hitler's complete power with the um, the, the presidency. After after Hindenburg died, Hitler became Führer, uh, Chancellor and President combined. Okay, so again, in in a concise paragraph, capture that. Okay, capture that sort of idea that theoretically, by the end of nineteen thirty four, Hitler was. A dictator. Germany had never had such a powerful leader as, as Hitler. Th he had the theoretical power to pass laws by himself. He didn't have to go to a president uh, and all powers were centralised in his hands in Berlin, theoretically. OK, so that, in a sense, is probably the first. Not quite half of the essay, but certainly a big chunk of the essay is to consider his leadership style and the theoretical powers that he actually had, okay, um, I would say is important. Um, and that's um, creating the foundation then for the debate about how he used those powers, which you move into in the um, building block three, four and five. So building block three, four and five is certainly more than half the answer, probably two thirds of the answer, I would say. Um, is where you need to really engage with, with, with the um, with, with the question. Okay, so building block three. Um, uh, my suggestion is here, present an argument. It's almost like trying to imagine you are that historian. Okay, who has this point of view? Present an argument that Hitler was a strong dictator. In other words, that he did use his theoretical powers. He often did dictate. He was decisive, in other words. He stepped in and he used his powers to make decisions um, that had a real impact, OK, um, that strengthened his control, OK? So you've got to basically think through the examples of that, think through what you could say. Um, what are the sort of the, 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 the key occasions where Hitler used those powers decisively. I mean, as a as a suggestion, one key one would be the Night of the Long Knives. OK, so Hitler watched for nearly a year the problem of the SA and then he made a very decisive move to have the SA leadership murdered. OK, strong dict dictatorial powers. OK, um, but 
we need more than that, okay? Give other examples, occasions where Hitler clearly was using his powers, where he stepped in and dictated and controlled the pace um, of things that were happening. I mean, another one a year earlier, remember, the speech to the Gauleiters in, uh, in June 1933, the one where he, he gave that clear direction about we must now move to evolution, not revolution. OK, so he stepped in. He was very decisive. He, he, he could see that a problem was emerging and he stepped in and he gave a clear steer as to what he wanted to happen. So the, the, that, that sort of thing um, is what we're looking for in building block three. OK, um, building block four um, then is a counter argument. OK, so it's obviously linked to building block three. Um, building block three presents an argument and building block four presents a counter argument, an opposite. OK, so here you're going to turn it around. Imagine you are the historian who disagrees with the historian has just spoken in building block three. And here, building block four historian is going to argue, actually, I don't agree with you, OK? Hitler was a weak dictator. He often did not dictate, which weakened his control. So again, sticking to the years 1933 to 35, work your way through, think about the occasions, present the argument that Hitler was often indecisive, OK? That he perhaps change his mind on things or that he made mistakes um he he did things that he that he subsequently wished he hadn't done etc etc and therefore just ignored what he did um that he was indec in, indecisive so again you're going to have to backtrack through the material backtrack through the lessons and think about it okay um because this is a level OK, the, the whole point about A-level is you get these challenging questions and you've got to basically spend the time thinking about it um, and, and doing the research there. OK, um, in a minute, I'm just going to give you some useful pointers um, for this as well. Um, and then building block five, present a response to the counter argument. OK, so you're almost going back to the historian in building block three. OK. Um, the one who presented an argument that Hitler um, was strong. So it's almost like an internal dialogue between two historians. And what you're doing in building block five is you're saying, yes, OK, he often was indecisive. That made him appear to be weak. But ultimately, he was still in control in spite of the fact that he appeared to be weak. So you're raising your essay to a slightly higher level there. You're saying it's about appearance, OK? It's not just about the fact, the reality of what was happening. It's about the perception of it. And that although he often appeared to be ineffective, actually, in spite of that, he was still in control. Now, hopefully, you're immediately engaging with what I'm saying here, as I, oh, I know, yeah, this is about cumulative radicalization. OK, so remember Hans Mommsen and the theory of cumulative radicalization that we did in that lesson two or three lessons ago. Um, so that would be, I would say, the sort of focus there. Um, and then write your conclusion. OK, um, and again, your conclusion should not be a surprise. That's the whole thing. Remember um, that um, I've often advised in the past um, so you could do it here is in your preparation, write your conclusion, write your conclusion, write it right very early in the early stages of planning your essay, write your conclusion um, so that as you write your essay, um, you're sowing little seeds throughout your answer as to what your conclusion is going to be. So when I, the marker, gets to the conclusion, I know and understand what your conclusion is going to be. OK, um, so hopefully that gives you pretty useful framework for writing a, a good answer to this question other guidance okay so as i say giving you nearly three weeks or in fact more than three weeks because i told you about this one nearly two weeks ago um to prepare for this so uh, like i say you, you, you can't just sort of suddenly two days before the deadline sit down and start working on it um spend you know 15-20 minutes each day over the next three weeks just 
doing a little bit of preparation for it. Um, I would say, um, well, what you need to do is remember that all the material to answer this question is drawn from those eight lessons that we've already done. OK, so we did three lessons way back at the beginning of the lockdown um, on how Hitler created a totalitarian state, um, the Enabling Act and Gleichschaltung, um, uh, the whole of that process. I think is really important. Um, we then did two lessons about the Night of the Long Knives. The first was the problem of the essay, halting a second revolution, and then the second one was actually the significance, the consequence of the Night of the Long Knives. And we then did three lessons about Hitler's style of leadership and the way in which government worked inside the Third Reich. Okay, Hitler's approach to government, the position of the army and the relationship of state and party. Um, so there is useful material in all of those lessons that you could use for this particular question. But I really emphasize this. Do not attempt to structure your answer by basically doing one paragraph on the enabling act, the next paragraph on Glass Shelton, the next paragraph on the problem of the essay. In other words, don't try to write your answer by sequencing your paragraphs just retelling the stories of the lessons in that order okay simply doesn't work use the approach from the previous slide will be my guidance for this and select relevant material from the different lessons to support what you want to say okay now very useful i will put this into the um teams area for this particular question okay um so when I set up the assignment and the, in the course content, the, the content library area for this particular assignment, um, I will um, upload this particular document. OK, um, it is for a question. Was Hitler a master in the Third Reich or a weak dictator? I set this essay question. This is actually a, another A-level essay question that was set a few years ago. Um, that's actually very similar, if you think about it, to the question you're answering here. And um, after I'd marked it on that occasion, I wrote a detailed, very detailed plan as feedback to my students on that particular occasion. Um, so I thought, well, this is useful. There's lots of good material here which you could apply and use in your answer. Um, so um, there it is, my detailed plan to a very similar question. OK, so have a look at that there's a lot of new material in there which i haven't taught taught you but hopefully you will engage with it and understand it um, and um, be, and try to incorporate some of that material into your answer when you write your answer okay other material all the way through those um eight lessons that I just referred you to, I was constantly saying crucial essays by Stephen Lee, two of them. How was Germany governed between 1933 and 1939? Notice that it goes up to 1939. Okay, your essay question is only up to 1935. Okay, but nevertheless, there's really, really good material in that essay. And how effective was the Nazi political system? How effective? In other words, considered within that one is about was Hitler a weak dictator or a strong dictator? OK, and remember that um, for each of those two essay questions, um, there were quizlets and there were podcasts in which I walked and talked you through what the things that Lee was saying. So hopefully you'll find that useful. And then finally, there was that really outstanding chapter in the Notes and Pridham Volume 2 um, called The Nazi Political System, which has got a really, really good section on Hitler's leadership style okay within it and it's got documents in that and i would really love to see at some point in your answer that you actually quote a short two or three well sh uh, a, sh a phrase from a from a document okay um that is relevant to the question show me in other words that you have actually used chapter six because there's such brilliant material in chapter six that you could use as evidence in this particular question okay 
So the deadline is Monday the 22nd of June. Um, this is in lockdown 2020. Um, so uh, you can't quite follow the normal routines as when you're in school, uh, which is that you would basically prepare and sit it down under the supervision um, in, in the of Miss Warren in the uh, sixth form study area. You can't do that. So it's down obviously to trust the new usual routine in lockdown is do all the research, the notes, um, question analysis, write a detailed plan. You will have to memorise that detailed plan because when you actually sit down to write the essay, you have to do it in timed exam conditions, 45 minutes if you're entitled to the extra 25%, which will bring it up to 56 minutes. Then obviously give yourself that, that you will know if that applies for you or not. Um, but when you write your answer, you must not have your plan and notes in sight okay that's really important you must have memorized that it's got to be writing naturally as if you were in the real exam when you have written it please can you scan the plan um, and the essay so the, i need to see the plan as well as the essay so scan it and upload it to the assignment area in teams by that particular date monday the 22nd of june um that's it a request if at all possible please some of you who have mastered the technology i have said to you before um download from apple or from google play whatever your device is a proper scanning app so when you scan an essay the ideal from my point of view would be that all the pages are scanned into a single document and then you send me that document um, ra rather than sending me um, five separate documents in other words a scan of each separate page if you have to do the latter that's fine i can cope with it it just means it takes me a bit more time because i've then got to combine all those separate pages into a single document which takes a bit of time um, Please don't copy and paste photographs into Word documents. That doesn't work, okay? Uh, a couple of you did that with the last essay, and it's messy, and, and, and it caused me a lot of extra work sort, sorting that out. Um, so you do need to effectively use a scanning app um, to scan the essay. Um, message me if you've got any queries on that, but hopefully you'll have mastered the technology by the time you get to doing this. That's it. Um, good luck with that. Obviously, I'm here to talk to. Um, you can message me directly on chat and we can have live chats and teams. If you need any help, we can set a time to have a conversation um, in teams if you need any individual help for this. Um, hope you're all well and safe um, and um, good luck with this. Um, the normal lessons continue this week. Um, so I'll be doing another YouTube um, uh, video for you. Uh, on Wednesday, which is actually um, tomorrow for our next topic. No, sorry, for, uh, Thursday, which is our next lesson. Our, our next topic will be um, about uh, society in Nazi Germany. So we'll move on to that and that will be coming on Thursday. Thank you very much. Goodbye.